The seven star Incineroar is back in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for its second time out. It's running over this weekend from the 13th of September until the 15th. If you missed it the first time around, this might be one of the last opportunities you're going to have to get this Pokemon with the Mightiest Mark. The build that we're going to feature in today's video is going to be for Iron Hands. Hopefully it's a Pokemon that you've already got in your game and you can just slightly tweak for this raid. It is going to be set to level 100. We have Hyper Train the IVs. Just make sure they are all set to 31. Terror typing is fighting and the held item here is the skull plans. The moveset we've got is going to be Iron Defense, Belly Drum, Focus Energy and Drain Punch. Abilities Quark Drive and the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP, 20 EVs in speed and then the remaining 236 EVs in defense with an impish or lax nature. The requirements for the vitamins and feathers will be on the screen now if you want to know how to EV using that method. But the speed stat is so important here because it means that you are one speed stat faster than the Incineroar, meaning you'll always be able to attack before it moves. That is the Iron Hands. The build, as always, will be down in the description below if you want to check it out. And of course, if you want some alternative builds, we have already covered the Dondozo build on the channel, so you can check the video out. It'll be linked down in the description as well. And the Malamar, which is a very consistent, very fun build for you to use. But Going into today's video, we'll jump into the raid now. I'll show you how easy it can be to run through this with Iron Hands. So when you first come into the raid against the Incineroar, as we know, on turn zero, it is going to drop an Intimidate, which is from its hidden ability. Then it's going to follow it up by a Snarl, so lowering your attack and special attack by one stage with both of those moves. The big thing that we're looking out for here in this raid is going to be where the Taunt lands. It can be into any one of the four Pokemon on our side of the field. If it's into the Iron Hands, we're probably going to have to just reset the raid at that point because we're not going to be able to set up after the taunt has happened. Other thing to note here is if you have an Intimidator on your side of the field, it's going to make this build in particular so much easier to execute. So here we go. There's the Snarl. The next thing we're going to see is that taunt. And as long as it's not into us, we'll be all right into this raid. So the taunt coming out and it is into the Star Raptor. So we're going to be fine to go ahead in this raid. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is not attack until that raid timer hits 95% of the time remaining. And that's when the Incineroar is going to nullify all stats and abilities on our side of the field. After that, we can start using things like the setup options that we've got on the Iron Hands. You only have to wait a few seconds for this to happen. But once you do see the message from the Incineroar, like we're seeing here, we'll find the stat changes and abilities on our side of the field. We are good to go. So first thing we're going to do is lock in with an Iron Defense. It's going to boost our defense by two stages, meaning that we can take these attacks from the Incineroar a lot better throughout this raid and meaning that we can get set up as well a lot quicker. So turn two after the Incineroar has used its own bulk up, it could go for our Flare Blitz there. We are going to lock in with a Belly Drum. That is going to max out our attack, take us to plus six, undo that Intimidate that we've already had from the start of the battle and it will cut our HP down in half. But because of the Iron Defense, we are going to be able to take these attacks pretty comfortably, especially when we're supported by that Intimidate on the Star Raptor. Intimidate can come out from anything like Taurus or Arcanine as well. Turn three, we're going to lock in with a Focus Energy. That's going to raise the critical hit chances that we have every time we use an attack. And then when you combine that with the Skull Blends item that we've got on the Iron Hands, it's going to mean that every attack that we land into the Incineroar is going to be pretty much a guaranteed critical hit meaning that we can kind of bypass those defense boosts that the Incineroar is setting up with those bulk ups. Turn four, gonna lock in with a Drain Punch. And as you can see, we're doing some decent damage there. We'll always land a critical hit, bypassing those defense boosters on the Incineroar and restoring all at HP. From here on out, it's pretty much gonna be very simple, very straightforward. We will get a Terra Orb charge stolen at some point down the line. That's gonna mean we're gonna have to attack an additional turn before we can terrestrialize and do even bigger damage. But we're from here on out pretty much just spamming the Drain Punch button. The only things I would say that you need to watch out for are going to be Flare Blitz burning you. You're probably going to have to take a turn to go for a Heal Cheer in that situation. Um, or otherwise, if a critical hit lands, it could kind of scupper your plans. But like you can see here, we have been burned. So we're going to have to take a turn to go for a Heal Cheer. That will slow us down a little bit, but it's still very fast. It's probably even faster than the Malamar. Um, going into this raid, which I really didn't expect us to see anything happen like that in this raid because of how complicated the Incineroar is and how difficult it is to beat. But in situations like that where you do get burned, just take a turn to use that heal shear, get rid of that burn, 
and you're kind of good to go for the rest of the raid. We've got a couple of drain punches to use before we can terrestrialize. Once we can terrestrialize, you'll notice the damage output will increase significantly, so we'll be able to cut through this incinero. Of course, the shield hasn't gone up on this incinero yet, but we're not in any danger. And this is why I say the Intimidate partnering Pokemon is so important because it just means that it's kind of negating those bulk ups a little bit more so you can take attacks a bit better because there is going to be a turn where it does use Flare Blitz and then probably follows it up with an Earthquake. If you haven't terrestrialized at that stage, you will be weak to the Earthquake, so it can be a little bit awkward in those situations taking the double attack, but most of the time, you're going to be in such a good position with the Iron Hands. And like I say, if you don't want to use Iron Hands, there's two other builds that we featured on the channel. You're going to have a really easy time taking this seven-star Pokemon down and getting this Incineroar with the Mightiest Mock. But like you can see, there's another Drain Punch there after the shield's gone up. Do not much damage here that we can Terrestrialize. But the next turn, we should be able to go for that Terrestrialization and then make very quick work of this Incineroar. Just all the hinges on these Flare Blitz not burning us. Touch wood here so it doesn't land the burn again because we've already been burnt once in this. There's the turn, like I say, with the Flare Blitz and then this, the, the Earthquake coming up. So with the Iron Defense, though, the Intimidate support, we're fine going forward in this raid. And as you can see, negates all boosts on all drops on its side of the field. But not going to matter too much because we are landing critical hits. So we negate any boost that it's got on its side. And we haven't really been lowering any defense stats on it either. So now we can just terrestrialize. You're going to see a big increase in the damage output from this Iron Hands. And uh, like I say, with the raid timer still not even at 50%, we're in such a good position to just close this one up very, very quickly. So you can see here, every time that we do land an attack, it will be a critical hit. So it's probably going to be another three to four brain punches from here on out. But still, it's not bad when you all things considered, really. And we will we should have a double attack turn where we can attack twice in a row when that shield breaks so it should be pretty quick after that shield is dropped but like i say from here on out just spamming the drain punches and it's going to be very quick close this raid up and uh, if you are getting the incinero of course for the very first time this weekend when it is running for its second time out let me know down in the comment section below what pokeball you are going to catch your incinero in of course the herba mysticas are dropping with it as well this weekend so a really good opportunity for you to kind of farm these raids and get yourself a bunch of herba mystica for shiny hunt and if you've still got some of that to do in scarlet and violet but again seven star raid uh, oh so close to breaking the shield there one more and we will take it down though but this build i do like a lot i like the iron hands i think it's very quick and like i say we've been slowed down in this raid because of the burn if we didn't have the burn we would have been able to kind of finish this up by now so you can see with about 50 percent of the raid timer there still left and um with that intimidate support we're in no danger of getting knocked out one more drain punch will be enough and that will be how easy it can be to take down this incinero with your iron hands probably not most consistent out of all the builds that we've got so probably don Dozo is the most consistent because it but it is very slow the malamar is pretty good but you have to kind of get knocked out before it kind of starts to get functioning and the iron hands as well really critical that you have an intimidate partnering pokemon but i mean out of all the builds that are out there i really do enjoy the iron hands and uh pretty consistent sweet herbert mystica there we go and that is the Incinero. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And let me know down in the comment section what build you've had more success with against the 7-star Incinero over this weekend and last weekend when it was running. If you found today's video useful, thanks again, friends, for tuning in. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.